Maybe I should have tried going live through Facebook. That's okay. Okay, here we go. It looks like we are streaming live. We don't need to see that. Okay. Um, so welcome everybody. Thanks for joining today for our how to read and interpret score sheets. Um, let me tell you just a little bit. Um, oh, I better mute my YouTube. Sorry, you guys. First day on the job. Okay. Now we don't have to hear the echo of me going live because <laughs> it is on a delay. Okay, now we're ready to talk a little bit about who I am. My name is Taylor Fabus. For those of you that I have not met yet, welcome. I'm so glad you found yourself here. Um, I'm going to do something that I think that a lot of exhibitors, writers, judges would all benefit from, and that is teaching you how to read and interpret a score sheet. Um, I myself am an open show judge, so um, I do use score sheets when I'm um, judging a bunch of classes, pretty much any class that has a pattern, I'm using a score sheet. It really helps me with uh, memory and accuracy and comparing exhibitors, especially as it's more and more popular for exhibitors to complete their pattern and then leave the arena. Um, that makes it, you have to only rely on your notes and your memory to place that class. So score sheets become extremely helpful. Um, Additionally, I have noticed the influx of virtual horse shows that we have seen during this terrible pandemic time. Um, but one of the silver linings to that is these virtual horse shows. And I've seen the majority of judges using a written score sheet as an opportunity to provide feedback to exhibitors um, rather than just placing the classes. So as judges and every judge I've ever met, actually loves the opportunity to give feedback to riders. There's just typically not enough time at horse shows, um, especially more and more when you have 50 some classes in a day and they want you to be done by 4.30 PM so everybody can get home in time. So it's just not real feasible to give the kind of feedback that we would like to give, um, especially at the beginner level. And then at the higher end level, there's no time and, um, an opportunity to give that feedback. So score sheets are a perfect way for that. So let's get started. So let's talk about what are some commonly scored classes. I'm here to tell you, I am not going to teach you every scoring system that you will see in horse shows um, for a couple different reasons. One, I don't have expertise in all scoring systems. Um, additionally, the one I'm going to teach to you, I think, is used most widely and will be most useful uh, for you, okay? But let's talk about some of these scored classes that you'll see. Reigning, and if you don't know what these classes are, feel free to shoot um, a search engine into YouTube and oh my gosh, you'll find so much. Dressage uses a scoring system. Showmanship, equitation, and horsemanship have a scoring system, especially in um, AQHA, which is American Quarter Horse Association or the American Paint Horse Association. You'll also find that most over fence classes have some sort of scoring system. Um, Western riding, trail, ranch riding, lunge line for the young horses. Some breed organizations even use a score sheet or a scorecard for halter classes um, or hunter in hand. This certainly isn't all the classes that could be scored, but these are very commonly seen at all levels, all breeds. Um, that they'll have some sort of um, score sheet uh, that will be made available to exhibitors later on. So we are going to focus today on a scoring system that was created by the National Reigning Horse Association, NRHA. Um, we're going to focus on that one because I tried to do a little bit of searching to find out the year that they created this scoring system and I didn't have any luck. There can maybe be a, a prize, a virtual high five if anybody knows the answer. Um, but they created this scoring system that pretty much 90% of the rest of the scoring systems are built upon. They've been doing it the longest. I think they're the most accurate. And I'm not including dressage in this. Um, they use a different scoring system and that's not one that I'll use today, um, partly because I'm just not an expert in that. Um, but essentially that's the one we're gonna focus on today. The one that was created by the National Reigning Horse Association and we're going to build from that. Um, I noticed that somebody just asked a question, so I'm going to check out that question. 
Um, is over fences a class for a term? Yes, that involves jumping, correct. Except typically jumping classes um, are more of a timed event uh, where like a, a working hunch or equitation over fences, hunter hack. Yes, that is what I meant by that. Um, so this NRHA scoring system has been adapted to be used in a variety of classes, including Western riding, trail, ranch riding. And then there's a variation of it that we're gonna focus a lot on today um, that is used for showmanship, equitation, and horsemanship classes. This scoring system was really only created or starting to be used widely a few years ago by the American Quarter Horse and similar associations. Um, and they still continue to make improvements each year. And honestly, every time they make an improvement or an adaptation, it just gets closer and closer to that rating system. Um, and it's, it's just a touch different, but I think it's really, really useful. Um, score sheets at an AQHA show are required for judges to use, and they are required that the judges then make them available to the show office following the show. And they're typically in a binder or they're posted on a wall. So that allows for transparency and judging. It allows for feedback to the exhibitor. And I'll tell you, when they started using these a few years ago and making them um, widely available. I found that the large majority of the score sheets were really positive. And I think that the more you understand about judges and how you're being evaluated, the more you come to learn that judges are judging on the positive aspects that they see of your writing. They are not trying to find the person who's making the mistakes and penalize them. We are trying to, we are literally as judges, we are like sitting in our chairs, watching you during your pattern, cheering you on. And I am not exaggerating. I mean, I'm kind of a positive poly. So I know I'm doing that, but I know other judges are too, um, where they're just like, oh, come on, get it right this time. Especially if they've seen you in other classes and let's say you've had trouble with the right lead and they see you go for it, they are seriously hoping you get it so that they can reward you for that. And I can't see Maria's face right now, um, but I bet she's nodding right along because she um, definitely does that same thing. So um, I used to think like if I was getting sixth place in a class that judge must not like me. Um, and especially at like an AQHA show when I'm showing in the amateur showmanship or amateur equitation, really, really difficult classes. I remember those were the first classes that I went and really studied my score sheet. And I was like, wow, I got sixth but it was all positive marks on my score sheet. The judge even had some comments for me that said things that I was doing right or things I needed to work on. And here's the deal. It was the stuff that I knew went wrong in my pattern, right? So it was all very, very honest. Um, and then the people that placed ahead of me just had a little better pattern. And that's gonna happen. It doesn't um, negate the fact that your pattern was still really good for you. Just other people had better ones that day. Um, and it really doesn't mean that the judge dislikes you. It just means um, somebody else scored a little higher that day. So I just thought that's important to mention because that's what score sheets have taught me the most. At any point, Maria, feel free to pipe in if you um, have other thoughts. I'll check out that Q&A. Oh, looks I just agree. And I think I want everybody to do as best as they can when they go into the arena, just the way you said it. Yeah, I mean, and it's really cool because it took me a while to decide to be a judge because I didn't quite realize that was the mentality. Um, and since becoming a judge and coaching a, um, the MSU horse judging team, I didn't mention that at the beginning, I do coach the MSU horse judging team. So that really made me become a content expert in how things were judged. Um, but then I decided to become a judge myself and it's a lot more rewarding than I, that I inspected, than I expected, excuse me. Um, and it's really neat that the mentality of almost every single judge I've met at any level has that same sort of, we want people to succeed and us be able to reward them. So it's really neat. So let's talk about the basics, the basics of this NRHA scoring system that has been also adapted and that we're gonna really learn today. Um, we get to practice together as well. So we're gonna actually get to watch videos and score them together. Um, hopefully that goes smoothly, but all the patterns begin with a score of 70. You walk in, you start at Kone and you are a 70. Now, let me tell you, if you walk away with a 70, that's a very good day, okay? That's, um, 
everything was correct. You didn't have any huge errors, or if you did, you did other things so well that you ended up back at 70. Um, 70 or even a little lower than that will win a lot of classes, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, the patterns themselves, again, so this score system is only for pattern classes and they are, the pattern itself is broken down into seven to 10 plus different maneuvers. It depends how long the pattern is. Obviously um, at a smaller uh, weekend show, it might not be as intricate. The one that we're gonna look at today, I think has six maneuvers. Um, so you, the patterns are broken down from the beginning and we'll talk about those in a second. And then each one of those maneuvers is going to get a score. This is what's a little different between the actual reigning scoring system and equitation horsemanship showmanship, okay? Um, but essentially in reigning, you can, if you have an extremely poor maneuver, you can get a minus one and a half, or if you have an excellent maneuver, you could earn plus one and a half points for that. So that's that first bullet here. So each maneuver is gonna get a score. A zero means it was correct. So a zero is actually good, okay? And I should be careful with the um, adjectives and words I'm using to describe this. Good is actually a plus half. We'll talk about that in a second, but either way, correct is zero. Um, in equitation, showmanship, horsemanship, that scale is a little bit different and it's minus three to plus three. Um, and you can use half points in there um, throughout. So we'll see what's next. Also, each maneuver can receive a penalty, but they aren't necessarily going to. But each maneuver is subject to a penalty, and we'll talk about what those are in just a second. So that's the gist of it. Um, some people like to say that 70 is average. I do not, okay? 70 is correct, but you can't, as a judge, know what's average when the first horse starts you can determine what was an average score once all 10, 20, 40, 100 exhibitors go through. Um, but for this scoring system to work, 70 in your head needs to be a correct pattern that's completed with um, no real degree of difficulty, but no error, okay? Um, but average is, is not a great term here. You'll notice I get a little sticky on words throughout this, and that's because um, I have really been one of the people that has been a mentor in me in the scoring system is Trevor Walton, who um, is very schooled on the reigning scoring system from NRHA. And he will definitely argue with you 70 is not average, it means correct. Okay. Um, but you'll see it referred to as average from time to time. And, and hopefully you understand why that's not totally accurate. Then each of those, um, after everybody gets their score, they're all scored independently of each other, then those scores correlate to final placings. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Then those score sheets are provided to exhibitors. Even if you are a judge at a 4-H level, I really encourage you to try to make those score sheets available um, so that kids can get more used to using them and, um, and just get that feedback that really takes no extra time out of the show day. So let's talk about what this score sheet looks like. Here we're looking at AQHA's reigning score sheet. And this is really very, very similar to all the rest of the score sheets that we're gonna look at. They're all just some variation of this. So I want to orient you to all the different parts that you'll see here. So we'll zoom in a little at the top. Um, that green circle is where you're going to mark the draw, which means like the order of go, first, second, third, however um, they came in, not the placings, but the draw. And then exhibitor number is the second box there. That green circle, you're going to fill in the maneuver description. So this pattern could be split up into eight parts um, or less. And so you just leave that blank if there was only seven parts to this pattern or seven maneuvers. And the judge is going to write down in here the parts of the pattern. For example, for a reigning one, it might sound like, or it might say four spins to the right, four spins to the left. Um, and then it goes onto their circles or whatever that pattern was, but that's filled out ahead of time. That circle that just popped up there, hopefully you can see that. That is where the maneuver score for that maneuver is going to go. And remember I said, every single maneuver has to get a score. It cannot be left blank. If it was correct, performed with no degree of difficulty, but without error, 
it is a zero, all right? If it is excellent, I'm gonna go back. So hopefully you can see it's a little bit pixelated, but hopefully you can read these here. Um, if it's an excellent, it's a plus one and a half. If it is extremely poor, it's minus one and a half. And you can see there are half point variations in there. So you don't use quarter points or anything like that. It's gotta be half points. Ha uh, minus half is poor, plus half is good, and so on and so forth. I'd say it's very important to get used to those words, the extremely poor, the very poor. Um, you'll find that reigning judges, as they're watching a class, they actually try to talk to themselves using those words, um, like as the horse slopes off, they can say, that was good. They continue throughout their circles and they're like, good, good, poor, good, good, and poor. Let's say the circles, which is a very long maneuver. It ended with a poor, but for the most part, that was good, right? You wanna make sure that your score tells a story of that entire maneuver, not just the end of that maneuver. And those words can really help guide a judge so that they pick the correct number. All right, so for me, if I watched a set of circles and I said, good, 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 I'm not saying nice, I'm not saying fine, I'm not saying okay, because those words do not correlate to a score. I'm going to use the words provided to me on the score sheet. And then it ends in, a, in the poor word, that doesn't mean that I'm gonna give it a minus half. It's probably gonna be a correct or maybe even stay at a good. Um, score for that entire maneuver. Hopefully that made sense and was useful to you. Um, and another really important thing that I want you to note here is that a plus one and a half is excellent. It is not perfect. So as judges, we have to not be afraid to give that prize to that exhibitor. If it was excellent, we didn't see room for improvement give them a plus one and a half. You don't get to see those very often, um, but if you see it, give it. Okay, use that range of scores. I have a tendency sometimes to get stuck in that minus half to plus half range. And then my scores are really close together. And that's not how the scoring system is supposed to be designed. Okay, so let's add another circle. That is where you're going to put a penalty should the exhibitor have a penalty on that maneuver. If there's no penalty, which hopefully most of the time there is not, you leave it blank, all right? If the exhibitor were to disqualify, go off pattern, use two hands, what have you, whatever that rule book determines as a disqualification, um, they will often, an, a judge would put a zero that covers both of these boxes and maybe right over here, write DQ or a penalty score zero. Um, those are some of the terms that remind the judge that they disqualified, okay? Um, but either way, you'll notice that it's marked there and then nine times out of 10, that judge will continue to score that pattern. So there's still feedback that that exhibitor can get even if they went off pattern in the beginning, okay? They can still get um, feedback. And just in case, as a judge, if you were wrong and they didn't go off pattern, you at least have all those rest of the scores and you can easily remember that first one and fix it. In raining, they actually could do a video replay. We don't get that in those other classes. Finally, hopefully you can see where that last circle went. That is where you add up all the penalties. Sometimes that's zero, if it's zero, just you can leave it blank. And then finally is that score. Remember everyone started with 70. So you're going to subtract any penalty points. And then this could be subtractions or additions based upon what scores you got um, to come up with a score, um, of the final score that determines the placing, okay? So here's what some that are uh, filled out. This is an NRHA, so a reigning score sheet. You can see it has the judge's name, the date, the class number, um, the exhibitor numbers and draw numbers. There's some other things that I'd like to point out to you. All um, these judges actually are given scribes. So the judge never has to take their eye off the arena um, and they just talk to someone next to them and say, plus half, penalty two, plus half, those sort of things. So um, there is a learning curve to being a scribe, but if you're interested in learning more about this scoring system, first of all, um, you're in the right place, uh, but also becoming a scribe. Sometimes it's a paid position or sometimes it's volunteer, but either way, super valuable. Um, I would highly recommend reaching out to some show associations and seeing if they need volunteer scribes. 
Okay, so some things I want to note here. The scribe always uses fractions, not decimal points. This could say minus 0.5. And that if that was mistaken for a minus 5, which obviously you could not have a minus 5 because it only goes from plus 1.5 to minus 1.5. But my point is use fractions so that there, that does not happen, okay? Also, you should use a pencil for obvious reasons. Um, and you'll notice up here, this says two. This means that they got a two point penalty. It's not two one point penalties. So do not add up your penalties in those little bitty boxes. Sometimes you have to write really, really little if things are going quite poorly and there can be several penalties on one maneuver, um, but you can add them up over here. Because remember this score sheet is an opportunity to tell that exhibitor a story about their pattern and what you saw as a judge. So if you saw three one point penalties, okay, which we'll talk about what is a one point penalty in a minute, um, and you wrote down three, then they would think they got a three point penalty, which is a which is a different thing, okay? Um, you have to do a certain thing to get a one point penalty and a certain thing to get a three point. So make sure that you, it would look like one comma one comma one or just one 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 can work as well um, in there. Don't add those up and keep fractions. Um, now, more oh, go ahead, Maria. On that last screen I've seen with scribes, um, it's really important that you have the plus or the minus on your maneuver score. Oh, I know yeah. we can get moving really quickly. It's really, really important to have it plus or the minus because we can sometimes forget what we've been going after we get a few maneuvers down. Yeah, so even though it's a plus half, this doesn't just say half because um, mm -hmm. you can't make that assumption. That was really good to bring up. And you can see over here that the winner of the whole day of that six person class was a 70 and a half. So again, a 70 can be a darn good day in the office. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about how that showmanship, equitation, and horsemanship score sheet looks a little bit different. Same concepts for the most part, but it just looks a little bit different. Uh, first of all, it's got a few more maneuver areas, so those patterns can be a little bit longer. Um, not necessarily longer in length, just more maneuvers, like break them up a little bit more. We're going to zoom in on this bad boy too. So this is the top of it. You can circle what class it is over here, what division it is. There's a spot over here to put the judge's name and signature. They will sign all of these. Um, this is difficult to read here, so I'll read it to you. It says each rider is scored between zero and infinity points and automatically begins the run with a score of 70 points. Minus three is extremely poor. Plus three is excellent. It's those same words that we used in raining. They've just, um, kind of stretch that score out a little bit. So you can use halves in this still, um, but you don't have to. For the longest time, this score sheet involved, rather than like actual numbers, they used checks and check pluses and check minuses. I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was horrible. Uh, and some judges would then correlate those checks to numbers, and so they'd end up doing math anyways. I think this makes a lot more sense, and like I said, for me, anytime they got closer to that NRHA scoring system, the better this got and the more it made sense. So that's my soapbox. Here we go. We're going to put the entry number. Um, so their back number and the working order goes next to it. That's at WO. This big circle oval thing is where we're going to put the maneuver descriptions. F and E. So that's a new one. Um, and part of the reason it's there for this class, because these classes are judged on the exhibitor, how they maneuver their horse through um, the pattern, how well they connect with their horse, their body position, all sorts of things. F and E means rider form and effectiveness. Um, less important in a reigning class because you're judging the horse, not the rider so much, okay? Um, and so this is important as a judge to have in a showmanship equitation or horsemanship class, because you don't want necessarily the person to win, have a horse that's just super duper broke and just really kills that pattern. And you, there was no real spot to give the rider um, bonus points on, let's say a young horse that was riding really well, 
um, and you noticed their horsemanship was really nice, but their horse was a little squirrely or they had to work a little harder to get things done. Um, so that's where you can kind of give that bonus point or not if you, um, if you think that rider needs it. That can go from zero, which zero is not a bad thing. It just doesn't add bonus points. Zero to one is considered average all the way up to, you could give five points there in F and E. And again, I think of it kind of as like a bonus points. Um, that would be an excellent rider. Okay. So things could go kind of ugly in the pattern, but you can still reward that rider for being an excellent rider um, to an extent. Right. And then you're going to, the one right next to it is the total penalty and then the final score. Another cool thing is that there's a comments section um, that judges do use quite regularly to just give a little bit um, of help to the exhibitor. Um, down here at the bottom where I talked about the rider form and effectiveness and then the penalties, um, minor penalties are three points, major are five and 10 are severe. And then in a second, I'll show you, there's a list of what is considered major, minor, severe. Um, so that should be useful to you. There's that comment section. And then this part in the, on the right side, in case you're wondering what in the world that is, that's called a ladder sheet. Super useful as a judge, because as people get their scores, you then take their back number or your scribe does and write their back number down next to their score. If you have a couple 85s, they can go right next to that. You have a score for real work where you could maybe um, split that tie if somebody was tied. Um, but the really nice thing is at the end of the class and you have to fill out your judges card, you can do that much more quickly rather than sorting through several pages um, and trying to get that math right. So I really like having this ladder sheet. It's kind of hard when you have more than, um, let's see, go back. This has 10 exhibitors on the page. I think there's some others that might have, um, some older ones that ha might have more. Uh, but if you have, let's say 15, then you need to still use the same ladder sheet um, from that first page. So anywho, let's continue. All right, so we do have some 4-H adaptations at the Michigan level. Um, several years ago, myself and one of my working students created this so that rather than having 10 on one sheet, we just had one on each sheet and it could be handed back to the exhibitor. So this is available on our website and um, available for download for any judge who wants to use it or any show um, organization that wants to hand it out. It doesn't have to just be used for 4-H. Um, um, the cool thing about this, again, because we wanted to make this an educational opportunity, it has um, a list of things that could get you disqualified. Um, it has a list of exactly each penalty and how many penalty points it is. Um, it has the scoring system over here. Uh, so it's got all the stuff right on that one page. You can fill out the obstacle descriptions. The only bummer is you have to fill this out on every page. So what I like to do is fill it out once um, and then make 20 copies of it or something. Um, and then the rest of it is pretty much the same. This along the bottom has a running total. I am not quick enough on my feet to do the running total um, as you go, but some scribes are. So here's some virtual adaptations that I've seen. If you've been watching the virtual horse show at all, it is a group that has 20,000 people in it. Coolest thing, I'll get on um, a little soapbox here. The coolest thing about this group is there's 20,000 people in it and everyone is super positive and encouraging and lifting each other up. And it's really great. And these are riders that are at um, the absolute highest level that you could be um, all the way down to people riding in their driveways, doing the pattern and everybody seems to be cheering each other on. So it's pretty much my favorite place on Facebook. <laughs> so I'd suggest checking that out. And this is a score sheet um, that I found from that. So this is posted on a, as a comment under a video on a Facebook group so that that exhibitor um, can see their um, feedback, okay, along with their final score, has their name, the class name, those sorts of things, okay. Um, and it looks like this judge used a little different scoring system than the one I just showed you, but it's, I mean, it still totally works, right? Um, here's one that myself, um, I've used. Oh, look, and I didn't even mean this, Maria, you are the <laughs> exhibitor that was scored on this. Um, so we just recently did a horse show, which we're going to get to see in a minute. And 
Um, it looks very, very similar. And all I did was make this on Microsoft Excel and that worked pretty good. So let's quickly talk about penalties as we are trucking along and I'm talking a mile a minute. <laughs> if you're interested in learning um, the AQHA penalties, which typically that association kind of sets the standard for a lot of these um, um, classes as far as stock horse breeds, you can, they're available online. And if you're competing in these classes and you don't understand the scoring system or what is going to get you a penalty, that's a problem, okay? Go learn what in the world that judge is evaluating you on. And I promise you will improve as an exhibitor. I, it happened to me when I started learning more about judging just um, 10 years ago. Um, you can also make your own cheat sheets for penalties. Um, and obviously you're not gonna use these on like a written exam, um, but judges absolutely have cheat sheets or condensed versions of those penalties for each class so that they're able to really draw on upon those quickly. If you ever see a judge um, referring to their rule book in the middle of the arena um, before a class or something, don't think, oh my gosh, that judge does not know what they're doing. Instead, be really appreciative that they are making sure they are refreshing their brain to make sure that they, oh, okay, that's a three point, you know, or, or whatever they're reviewing. They, that rule book is, um, is really like their Bible as judging goes. Okay. So they want to make sure that they evaluate that based on what that rule book says. So, um, a well-prepared judge will have that on them at all times. Here's some penalty cheat sheets. I did not make them. I don't want to take credit for them because they're beautiful. Um, but what I do as a horse judging coach is I make all of my MSU horse judging students create cheat sheets of their own. The process of creating a cheat sheet um, is going to help you learn the, the penalties um, as well as you'll then have this super handy resource available for you. So I'll give a shout out to my student, Amber, who made these. Uh, hers are color coded, which I always dig color coding. Um, and you can see up the top here, this is the raining penalties. These are the trail penalties. We're actually going to use her cheat sheet um, when we score together in just a minute. If you don't want to make yours all fancy and color coded, that's okay. My student Lindsay made these. Um, this is how her brain prefers to read things. Um, and it totally works just as well. I've actually also used hers when I'm judging before uh, and they work really nicely. I actually um, have printed out my own cheat sheets that are similar to this. I laminate them, they live in my judging folder um, and they're really quite useful. You'll notice that they do, they are abbreviated. So it's important that you make your own cheat sheet so that you knew what you meant when you wrote that. Um, because it might confuse you if you're like, what did that person mean by that symbol? But if it's you creating it, you'll know exactly what you meant. So who's down for some practice? Are you guys, before we hop into practicing, I want to give you an opportunity to ask questions in the chat or the Q&A and cover those. So I will peek at that. And Maria has been an awesome panelist. She's putting links in the chat for all of you, which I will also put in the description or caption of our YouTube video for those that are watching um, later on YouTube. I'll make sure that you get those links as well to the Michigan 4-H trail score sheet, that individual sheet um, that's on there. Okay. All right, we have a horse bowl, hypology horse judging student that's on here, awesome. Smart idea to join. If we don't have any questions, we can get right to it. If it'll let me, gosh darn it. <laughs> okay, um, we are going to do some showman trio. Oops. My screen sharing is paused, so. Sorry, that looked crazy. Um, we are going to judge some showmanship together. We're gonna judge my kiddos so we can kind of pick on them um, and it's just fine with them. So let me, this is the score sheet that I used that I told you about here. It's just a Microsoft Excel, worked pretty good. And then when I wanted to share that with an exhibitor, I just took a screenshot of it and cropped the video or cropped that picture. Um, but there are other ways that you could certainly do that. Let's 
read the pattern and learn it together. Okay, so I'm going to fill out my score sheet. I thought we'd do this all together so um, you know exactly how this goes as a judge. Okay, so my first maneuver is walk halfway to B. So I'm gonna put walk half to B. My second maneuver is trot to B and perform a trot circle to the right of B. So I'm gonna just write trot circle at B. Again, it's important that you fill out your own one of these so you knew what you meant here. Um, at B, break to a walk. So just a reminder here, we're gonna walk halfway. We're gonna trot a circle to the right. Then you're gonna break to the walk, walk a smaller circle around B. Um, so walk around B. Our fourth maneuver, when that circle is complete, you're going to trot to the judge. So trot to J, J being judge. Our fifth maneuver is our setup for inspection. I do know some judges um, that will separate those two into two different maneuvers. So the setup and then the inspection. So it just depends on the, on the judge there or how many maneuvers are in a pattern if they felt like they needed to kind of stretch that out and be able to give an exhibitor more scores. Um, and when dismissed, perform a 90 degree turn and walk away. So 90 and walk. All right, is everybody on board so far? If you're nodding, I'm gonna assume. If you're not on board, you just throw a question in the chat. Okay. What did I just do? Oh, I went to my own profile. Aren't my kids cute? My gosh. Hopefully this doesn't go to me. Okay, so we're gonna start out and you can see this has already been judged by Maria, but we won't look at that because that might sway our votes. Um, but we are going to judge this pattern. It's gonna go quickly. I'm trying to pause it. Um, something that I would note for me, I judged three or four virtual horse shows already. It's actually, in my opinion, more work than a regular horse show. Um, I still like to have pen and paper. So what I did is I still, I made my own little score sheet. If I had a printer at home, I'd actually print out score sheet and, and fill them out and then translate them. But I don't have a printer at home. Uh, and I bought one and it wouldn't work. So I returned that. <laughs> but anywho, uh, I just uh, made my own little cheat sheet. Hopefully you guys can kind of say that, see that or made my own little score sheet. Um, and that was things were able to go a lot quicker for me that way. Um, and you can see this is just filled out a bunch of score. <laughs> so I'm going to get mine ready and we can kind of do it together and then we'll fill out the score sheet. Okay. Or we can pause between maneuvers. So we'll get to watch Caroline do this a few times. Let's remember the very first maneuver is walk halfway to B. Not a whole lot to judge there, right? You'll find that some maneuvers um, are easier to plus or they're more difficult so they're easier to lose points on. A walk halfway to B um, probably is not gonna earn her a ton of points, but we'll see. We'll watch it together. I'll pause it and then we'll come up with a score. All right, so she walked halfway to B. Maria, what would you give that? And it's a, we're not gonna compare it against your other one. <laughs> I mean, she walked straight, everything looked good. I mean, I didn't want, I don't think we'd plus her a lot, but I don't think we'd minus her either. Yeah, there was, there was nothing wrong with it. Was there a lot of degree of difficulty? No. Probably not. Um, but he did keep his body very straight, which is super important in showmanship. Um, if I could see this exhibitor better, like in real life, and she was had a really pleasant expression and had eye contact with me, let me tell you, if you're ever showing to me in showmanship um, and you're a youth and you give me eye contact, you're gonna get bonus points because not a lot of kids have the confidence to look the judge in the eye. 
Um, so that's become a pet peeve of mine over the years. Um, so if she was giving me some of those extra showmanship qualities, that might be how she pluses that really basic maneuver. Uh, for now, I'm just going to give it a zero. Does that sound good, Maria? Yeah, I would say zero. Okay. So the next part of this, and actually we can go ahead and fill that in here. Oh, we should have put Caroline. That's this little gal's name. And Patty. And Caroline got a zero. Up here is where I put a penalty. No penalties happened there. Let's and see. If we, no penalties. We put nothing. That's right. So she's doing her trot circle, and I will pause at the end of it. Okay. Um, I would say zero to plus half. So she made her circle even on both the top and bottom side of those cones. She had some good pace. Her horse trotted right off for her. Um, but she got a little, little far past here. She straightened it out nice. Um, but those are some of the things that kept her from getting a bigger score. But I'm going to give her a little credit for all the things that went well, like that really nice um, trot off and um, the nice breakdown to the walk. Does that sound good, Maria? Yeah, I would lean towards like more zero because I would like to see a rounder circle, but I'm more of a circle than a shape of the circle than anything. But that's no. like what you give me. That's very justified. Yep. Okay, let's see how she does um, in the walk circle. If you want bonus points at the walk, guys, faster. Okay, try to walk with purpose. Okay, so for me, that's just a zero. I thought it was kind of slow. Do you agree? Yeah, I like the transition back though into the draw. I thought that was nice. Yes, and we already saw that before. This exhibitor and horse combo can um, trot off beautifully. So maybe this is where she's gonna gain some bonus points is her trot to the judge. So I'll rewind just a hair. If she stays straight, the exhibitor smiling, has eye contact, nice straight stop. Let's see if we get a good square setup. So a little staggered there in the front, um, two feet, but I'm gonna plus that trot to the judge. How do you feel, Maria? Yeah, I like that. What do you wanna give it? Plus half, plus one? I think we should reward that, I mean. Okay. Barrier scores a little bit. And I said already, guys, that I get stuck in that small range. And she's right. We should plus that. When you see something good, gosh darn it, reward them. Especially because if I'm going to plus half her trot circle, I should give more credit to the trot to the judge because it was better than that. Um, I hope that that makes sense. Um, and again, we have minus three all the way up to plus three to be using on these. Really like that this exhibitor continues to have eye contact with the judge while paying attention to her horse still. You don't see that in these youngins very often. Okay, Maria, I feel like we should plus that setup. Yeah, I think it was plus. She was a little staggered in the front, but still like her posture, she was really confident. Yeah, so Maria, if you guys didn't notice, she just talked about the whole maneuver, right? So. I don't love that he wasn't super square in his setup. Wish she would have fixed that. However, there were lots of really positive things in the rest of it. So the good outweighed the bad. Um, had he been set up square, you probably could have plus two that. Um, but because it kind of drags it down a little. So we're going to give her a plus one just for math's sake here. And then she has a 90 and walk away. So now we're really watching that pivot foot. He stuck it and they walked away nice and straight. You'll notice she did not look back at the judge. So you don't need to do that as an exhibitor if you're wondering, um, especially in showmanship or anywhere. It's not a good idea to look back at the judge when you're moving forward, it's not safe. Um, and I found that a lot of exhibitors kind of want a nod from the judge 
to be excused almost is like a sign of respect, uh, but it's not necessary anymore. Finish your pattern, do whatever the finish says, whether it's walk, jog off. If it doesn't say, just jog off or get out of the way. Um, you do not need to wait to be um, released, so to speak. So um, let's give that a plus one as well. Uh, Maria, what would you give this exhibitor for form and effectiveness? Oh, I'm, I'm really bad at F and E scores. Um, but it's okay because they just yeah. have to be consistent for when you yeah. just. I think I would give her probably like a plus three because I really liked her confidence and she was really like good. Um, but I tend not to go on the high side with F and E scores. I'm really conservative with my F and E scores in general. Well, don't be afraid to. So if she was a three, which I think that's, I think that's great. Remember, these are like bonus points, right? So this showman and it's, you know, I've already made this clear. It's my daughter. So I'm partial. However, she really shows she doesn't, um, when someone hates showmanship, I can tell as a judge, I know Maria can as well. Um, so I'm going to reward this exhibitor, although her pattern didn't really light my fire throughout. It was correct, but it wasn't necessarily fancy. Uh, her form and effectiveness was, was above average. Okay. It is more than you normally see. Um, so I'm going to give her um, a three, which would fall into the good category. Okay. Five is the best you can do there. And that's excellent. If she got a zero, it doesn't mean that she was bad. It's just um, average. Okay. Um, any penalties? I didn't say any. No penalties. So we'll leave that blank. So here's what we have to do. We start with a 70 and we are going to 70 and a half, 71 and a half, 72 and a half, 73 and a half, 76 and a half, 76 and it's not going to work because it's <laughs> Microsoft Excel. So we're actually going to use decimals this time. Oh, you stinker. I guess it will, it just didn't have enough room. Okay, 76 and a half. You could provide comments as well, um, like make your circle rounder, less oval. Like Maria mentioned, I think that would be a really good um, critique for this exhibitor, something that they can actually change next time. Uh, and that's that. So shall we do one more, Maria? Always. Okay, we'll do one more. We'll actually pick on my other daughter um, because then I know I'm not offending anyone. I think she shows spring in this, doesn't she? We have a question. Okay. So we have a good question um, from Colette, and she's talking about horse judging. Um, competitive horse judging. Um, and that is when there's only ever four horses. Colette, I still like to use a score sheet um, because I am used to using them as a judge, but it's not always necessary that you use them. Um, and let's say, for example, let's say the horse judging class has us rank four horses. For example, if horse number three is first, horse four is second, one is third, and two is last, I would put the ranking as three, four, one, two. Any tips for using this method? Um, you can absolutely still use a score sheet for that. And my only tips as far as um, a coach goes is what I have my exhibitors do when there's only four horses is right now we've had one horse go. That horse is winning the class. So at the, they're at the top of my rank. Number one is first, all right? We're about to watch horse two. When horse two is done, then I place those two. I decide, did two just beat one or is it one still on top? That may seem a little silly right now, but I'm promising you that's so much easier than if you watch all four and then you have to come up with a placing, especially if you didn't use a scoring system. Um, if you use a scoring system, you can just use those scores to um, sort them. But what I like to do is watch the pattern and then we're gonna watch the second one. And then all we gotta decide is where does two go? Then you watch the third and then you decide where three goes. So by the time that fourth one is done, you've already placed your class. Okay, so that would be um, my suggestion there. And the other thing with using score sheets for horse judging is the score sheet tells you exactly what each horse did better than the other horse. 
So when you're giving your reasons, it's kind of a really cool way to sort out your class and give reasons. So you can say, you know, horse three had the better um, 90 degree pivot at the end. If you're talking showmanship, I guess. Um, but if you're talking reining, you could say they had um, a higher quality spin than uh, whatever horse you were placing because your score sheet will tell you that based on the scores that you wrote down. Um, so I really did like using score sheets when I was on the horse judging team before. Yes, I agree. Um, all right, here's a little sneak peek, guys. I do know there's some penalties in this one. Um, so I'm going to pull up my penalty cheat sheet that I would have had with me, but I already had known these videos, so I knew what was going to happen. So I have my showmanship penalties right here. We can just briefly go over these. Um, a BOG is like a break of gait at the walker trot for less than two strides. Um, that's a three point. All of these things get you a three point all the way up to 10 points. Uh, being out of position during inspection, um, loss or holding the chain, two hands on the shank, uh, severe disobedience, five points resting their foot, stepping out of the setup, stepping out of the pivot, um, all of those sort of things. In equitation, um, wrong diagonals, wrong leads, looking for your diagonal, those are all penalties and it's all right there in that free rule book that you can um, read and become familiar with. So let's watch our Claire. Okay, I'm trying to find my score sheet that I hid. There it is. <laughs> and we'll hide that. We can grab that in a minute. We have Claire in spring and we are going to watch her do the first maneuver. Okay, guys. So if you can't tell, this is a very small exhibitor. So there was a little bit of a confusion on what to do there. Um, and so she stopped after that walk halfway rather than just going right into the trot. So what Maria and I decided to do with this is give her a break of gate penalty. So we can open that up and look. Break of gate for walk or trot for less than two strides. Um, so that's a little bit of a weird thing what happened. If you're at a really high level, they could consider that off pattern because you added a um, thing in there, but this is not a really high level. So we're gonna give her a three point penalty for that. You'll notice that she didn't stay as straight as the other exhibitor, um, kind of went a little bit crooked, doesn't seem to have the eye contact, but still so far is doing the right things. Um, so we're not gonna hurt her severely. I'm gonna give her a minus half for her um for her maneuver score and just know that just because you get a penalty on a maneuver doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have a very poor maneuver score okay so we'll continue on we'll see how she does in her trot circle i'll have you score this one maria I thought her trot circle was nice. It was round. She got going. She got pulling in front of him just a little tiny bit. Um, but I would say probably a zero for me. I wasn't like super impressed, but I wasn't offended either. So it was kind of like right in that middle for me. Okay. We'll go with a zero. I might have went with a minus half. Um, but as a judge, you also take into consideration the level of show. Um, so if this was at the Congress, so the world's largest horse show, they're going to minus it. This was not, this was, um, a beginner class. So going to be a little bit kinder. They say not to do that at judging seminars, but I'm here to tell you that's what happens in the real world. Okay. Now she's going to do her walk circle. She's doing kind of the same thing here where she's letting her pony, um, get behind her a little bit, but she did it. So I think that was similar. How about we give that one a zero as well? Sound good, Maria? Yeah, I probably, I think I would have minus it because she kind of did like a, a half circle. The she shape of it. Half it. And then cut half. I probably would have minus that one. But. Okay. Then she trots to the judge. <laughs> that was actually a pretty good straight trot to the judge. So let's plus that. And we'll see how the rest goes. Hey, you may not have noticed there, we just had a penalty. Did you see it, Maria? Yeah, we lost the lead rope. The we didn't lose the lead rope. I missed that one, maybe. 
she grabs the shank with two hands. There yeah. she lets go of the lead rope. Uh, I'm of myself on this one. Okay, so let's watch when she's setting up. You can see here that she's using two hands near the chain. She gets a really great little setup. Also, she's the cutest kid ever. Uh, <laughs> and then she lets go. So let's see what those penalties would be and we'll add them up. So I think um, loss, holding the chain, two hands on the shank. She did it two different times. So she's actually gonna get two, point, two 10 point penalties there. She's switching sides correctly. <laughs> okay, so I think because she had those two big errors, um, I'm gonna still give her a minus half here, maybe a minus, we can go minus one. Um, but I don't need to kill her with a minus three because she still did it correctly. Yeah, she did a good job switching sides. And still having eye contact with the judge, the pony stayed still, um, those sort of things, but but we can't reward her for letting go. That's dangerous, right? Anything, anytime something involves danger, um, you can't be yeah. gentle on that. So like, it's a 10 point penalty to stand in front of your horse when you back. That's a huge penalty. Okay, then we're gonna do a 90. Was there any penalties in that? We did not get a step out of that. Right, so she stepped out at the pivot. So that's a five point penalty um, during the pivot. But otherwise it was not too bad. So we'll just minus half it. Or minus 12. All right, so we'll add these up. What are you giving on F and E? So you gave three to the other exhibitor. Is it going to be higher, lower, or equal? She shows really well, but she wasn't showing the same way as our previous exhibitor. I agree. So, so the one. Yeah, I was saying one, one and a half, maybe. Okay, so we'll go with a one. Um, total penalties here. She has twenty-eight penalty points. Um, so <laughs> this is going to involve the calculator, I believe. <laughs> Judge me if you will. So we're going to start with seventy. We have a minus half and a plus half. Those go ahead and cancel each other out. And then we have a minus one and a half. So we'll take 28 and we will add 1.5 because these are the total points I'm subtracting from 70. Um, and then I've got to add in um, or give credit for that one back. Hopefully that makes sense. So now we're at 28 and a half. So we'll do 70 minus 28.5, 41 and a half is her score. But she's really cute and she's really young and trying. Still a good yeah. score. So this exhibitor is four. <laughs> um, so, but it's just an example where the score sheet doesn't necessarily give credit for potential. That's not how it's designed. It's important to still be honest and true with your scoring um, and a parent should and um, better appreciate that. Um, and it, it doesn't mean she's not gonna get second place behind that other exhibitor. So um, I think that Caroline's score was 76 and a half, I think. Yeah. Um, and this one is quite a bit lower, but you, as a judge, you could see a couple 20 scores in just a second. So, um, so keep on showing as an exhibitor, even if you have a penalty and you know what happens, first of all, judges are human and they might have missed it. Um, but secondly, you still could be the best one that day. Um, so I see exhibitors kind of um, blow it a lot because they get mad at their horses and it's not necessary because they're doing a whole lot better than they realize. So I hope that's useful. So guys, um, that is, what we had planned for today, we got a couple practice runs in there. I hope that the PowerPoint uh, presentation was useful for all of you um, and that you at least know how to interpret a score sheet more accurately now. Um, so, anything? Oh, and I, we do have a good question. What do you do if there's a tie? Um, so a couple different things, Lynn, um, you can do if there's a tie. Typically, the penalty points would be the first thing that you go to. So if someone has 
no penalty points or less penalty points, they would win the tie. Um, or as a judge at the beginning of the class, I set a maneuver that is my tiebreaker um, in this class, because I did judge this class as well, um, just different set of riders. Um, and the trot circle, I thought that was the most difficult or the uh, maneuver that I, I liked the most essentially. And so that was my tiebreaker um, maneuver. So great question. Go ahead, Maria. That was what I was gonna say is there's a question. Oh, <laughs> so guys, I hope this was useful. It will be saved on YouTube at youtube.com slash EX horses. Um, and you're welcome to revisit it there. But get yourselves back outside. It's gorgeous out. <laughs>